I, I'm to the point where I actually am fine with with having some terrifying end if I just get to see a ghost before I go. Welcome to Muddle Dice. Uh, tonight we have Jeremy Hahn on the show. Hey, Jeremy, you there? Yeah, yeah. Right <laughs> Jeremy, here. there we go. Uh, Jeremy has a quite impressive list of credits. Uh, he's worked on Batwoman, Iron Man Civil War. His most recent independent stuff is The Beauty and the Realm. Uh, so he's going to be on with us tonight to talk comics and his career. I'm Daniel. This is Tyke. What up? Uh, I've got some Canadian whiskey in my glass. I believe Tyke has some bourbon. I got the bullet. Let's go. And Jeremy, what do you got? I've got a Lafroy quarter cask. Smoky nice. scotch. So let's start with, uh, you were at a convention last week, right, Jeremy? Yeah, it was a small convention in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Oh, nice. Just, yeah, just, uh, I live in Joplin, Missouri, which is about, you know, like an hour and change away from Tulsa, so... Okay. It, yeah, short, short little drive. It was a good local show. Uh, you know, probably the coolest thing about the show was uh, I was literally in between Christopher Priest and Larry Stroman. No. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I basically spent the entire weekend just chatting with Larry. That was awesome. amazing. <laughs> I, I I went and found copies. I didn't bring them with me because I wasn't even thinking, but uh, I found copies of his X Factor run and uh, got all those signed. Uh, I felt good. Cool. Oh man, that's cool, nice. man. Yeah, that's, Larry's, that's what's up. Larry's a great guy. I, I, he's got great stories too. I mean, he, you know, he was in comics at one of the the pinnacles of of my fandom. You know, uh, his yeah. run on X Factor. When that when that happened, you know, I looked at it. And it was so unlike anything else that I had seen. Uh, it was just weird. <laughs> it was <fantastic. laughs> and, and and I I really loved it. And uh, you know, uh, it was great hearing you know about comics at that time and how they changed and him you know uh, stepping away for a while and then coming back now and uh, yeah. So uh, it was good. It was good. Tulsa was a fun show and uh, like I said, I got to hang out with some of the uh the legends of comics that was fantastic that's awesome that's, that's awesome that's man. Badass. at a small convention too that's yeah. that's pretty cool dude well yeah because and you know like it's tricky because you go to a show like you know new york comic con we all yeah. go you work your ass off the entire time uh it's fantastic you know getting to see that many people and, and really do all the big things but when you go to a small show you get to really talk to fans you know yeah. i had i yeah. i had fans that kind of came up and and literally uh just because of the time of day and the way it was we talked for about 20 minutes about that's awesome yeah we talked about hellblazer and constantine and me <laughs> me working on that book and but you know you get that real in-depth conversation you get that with the with fans you get it with other pros you get it with the people running the show it's, uh, it's a okay. it's a it's a great experience so would you prefer like a small convention over a big one as far as just like that kind of experience? Uh, I, I like to mix it up. You know, I mean, it's okay. I, I, th I think that, you know, you do, um, you know, they both have value for different reasons. And, yeah, I got you. And we, you know, the reasons that we go to shows as creators, you know, we all have our own personal reasons for doing it. You know, for me, as much as anything, I think that, um, a show is about uh, communicating with with fans. It's about you know getting the book in somebody else's hands. I got to meet a couple people that well, actually, one lady that I met um, in Tulsa at this show. She had she had never read a comic book before. She was there with some friends. They kind of talked hmm. about it a lot, but um, you know I put the I put the beauty in her hand. The trade that first trade. And, and she was like, nice. you know, I, I'm going to try this. Yeah. I'm going to check <laughs> it out. And, uh, she messaged later and she was like, Hey, I, you know, I read this, you know, uh, it was great. you know, I'm going to read more comics. So that's I, awesome. it, nice. Yeah. Mission accomplished. Right. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. Good yeah. job, yeah. sir. Uh, yeah. a good ambassador for the medium. That's cool. 
Well, we need more ambassadors for the medium. I think it's a yeah. it's a unique time in in fandom right now. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. I think that I, I, I want to have conversations about the stuff that I like. I want to sure. have conversations about loving things and about the way that you know, like we need we need more comic, we need more comic readers. Um, I don't want to watch this this uh, medium, you know, you know, uh, fade into you know, the, uh, the history books. Yeah. 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 Uh, woman saw the comic for the first time. Ah, shit. Too much time has passed between that. I have done lost it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> all I right but, um, it may dude it, it seriously may come back and i'm like oh right there yeah and, yeah but i'm sorry yeah sorry okay that's cool um all right cool so the convention was a success had a good time at it yeah yeah cool all right so let's uh let's go way back how did you get started in the comics industry you know writing and drawing and all that um you know i collected comics forever uh my mom worked at a, a little dime store hmm. uh and you know we're talking in the the late 70s early 80s okay. and uh they would tear the covers off the comic books and then you know you, you return the covers and then you throw the comics away well the right. guy that, the guy that owned the place just let her take those home you know she she was a single mom and uh, so she got to bring home comic books for me to read Hmm. Um, and I just loved the stories, you know, and I got exposed to everything from, you know, Archie comics to, uh, Marvel, DC, whatever it was, you know, and I got these comics and I mean, I didn't know what the hell a comic book cover looked like, but I, but I definitely, <laughs> you know, I, I, I got exposed to all these stories. And so, uh, um, you know, uh, we got, a, I got a little older and there was a comic shop in my local town. And I found out about it and, um, you know, I was hooked on everything from Claremont and Byrne on X-Men to, you know, a lot of what the DC was doing at the time, you know, um, and that just kind of stuck, you know, I, I was a 14 year old kid, you know, uh, wanting to try to figure out how to work in comics when the image boom happened, um, you know, I, it was, it was huge for me. I mean, you know, I yeah. looked, you know, like I was saying, you know, in Tulsa, I was talking to Lane Stroman about it. You know, I was like, you know, that happened at the perfect time for me. I was obsessed with Spawn. I was obsessed with, you know, the Max yeah. and, and yeah. Wildstorm. Oh, yeah. oh, my goodness. Yes. Go ahead, sir. <laughs> and, you know, um, and, you know, and, and Tribe, I was telling him, I was like, Tribe was the one that I actually was like most blown away by because it was just so different. You know, it had that, that bolt that simple black cover with the gold stamp on it you know that really <laughs> stood out for me and uh you know um all i wanted to do was was work you know for image comics i wanted to be you know one of those people um i went to finish high school and i said hey i'm gonna draw comics i went to college it's a little small uh mssu it's a, it's a university here in joplin oh, yeah. and um i took art classes and um, then I left school and just started making my own comics. And, you know, making your own comics is hard. I mean, it's a, <laughs> you know I know, so, I know so many people coming up right now and, and I know people that have had amazing amounts of success very, very quickly. Um, I know that, you know, we always, you know, see somebody that, that hits big and the thing that we don't always know is that they worked their asses off for 10 years trying yeah. to, you know, yeah, trying to get this exactly. stuff done. Um, but I, I worked very hard and, you know, um, my creator owned stuff. You know, my first book was a book called Paradigm with Image. Okay. And that, and that led to me doing Battle Him with Image. Um, and then I worked for IDW and then I did um, the leading man for, for Oni and that, the Leading Man, when I did that project, that really kind of changed things for me. Um, yeah. It got the attention of C.B. Sabolsky at, at uh, Marvel, and he brought me in. And 
Nice. You know, they, they brought me in and had me do this uh, Civil War Captain America Iron Man book. And it was a, you know, it was a huge change for me. Yeah. I mean, I went from drawing small, you know, action books, you know, with regular people kind of shooting at each other to, right. you know, drawing the icons of my childhood. Um, nice. it's, it's, it's probably the hardest thing for me to go back and look at, too, uh, if I'm honest. Um, there's so much about it that I would change just because I was learning at the time. Right. And, right. and I, you know, I, I kind of had to kick off the training wheels pretty fast and just, you know, ride, <laughs> you know, ride hard. And, uh, but, you know, the Marvel stuff, you know, in spite of, you know, some of my mixed feelings about it um, on my end, uh, led me to working for DC. And I did that and finally came full circle at the end. And I'm now doing my own creator own stuff again, which is fantastic. Yes. Nice. Do you remember, uh, like you said, you drew your first, you, you, the first comic you drew was in college, I think you said. Do you remember what that was, like what it was about or anything? Um, you know, I was I was doing a lot of different stuff. Um, I messed around with, um, you know, I, I think one of the interesting things was when I, that particular time when I was coming up, there was this boom of um, kind of more cartoony, almost manga-based artists working. Okay. Uh, Joe Mad was huge at the time. Uh, uh, Mike Waringo, you know, um, rest his soul, uh, was, was huge. Uh, uh, Humberto Ramos was, was really big at the time. And everybody that I knew, all my local friends, you got to draw like these guys. This is the big thing. You got to do it like this. And so I really tried to do like super cartoony stuff. And uh, I, I, I could not pull it off. You know, I was never as good as I wanted to be. Um, until I kind of came back to more of a kind of slightly more realistic. It was a style that I drew in whenever I just naturally drew in college, the okay. life drawing and stuff. And, yeah. um, you know, so, so really paradigm was really the first thing that I did that, that took off. Uh, I took, we took that, we did that as a creator owned book, uh, just completely, um, you know, self published it. And then we took it to Kansas City and uh, showed it to Jim Valentino at Image. And he was like, hey, I really like this. Why don't you, uh, you know, why don't you come oh, do it at Image? <laughs> and yeah, that's, I mean, that oh, was man, an amazing yes. experience. How much nervous would you be? Like, all right, here I am. <laughs> <laughs> Giving this to Valentino and then just sitting, like, how long does he tell you? If you don't mind me asking, like, is it kind of like a week process? Like, or does he say, like, right on the spot, yes, I want to go ahead, I want to push forward with this, or? The best just... thing about that, the gift that I was given was that I had no expectation. I Got it. Oh, I, I got you. I, I made that book. <laughs> We were actually, the first issue had been published. We were working on the second issue. We were going to self-publish it. We were getting ready to solicit it in Diamond. Yeah. And, um, and we had that meeting. And so I gave it to him. You know, I just was like, hey, I love Shadowhawk. You know, it was one of, right. one of those those big image books that really affected me. That, yep. um, you know, I, I told him the story about how I, you know, read Guardians and swiped a copy of it from my buddy. Uh, I still, <laughs> still, still feel guilty about that, but um, <laughs> but um, but I gave the copy to him with no expectation. I just gave it to him out of I love you know I love comics. I love what you do. Thank love you. Love the media. Doing this. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. awesome, 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 got, dude. And I got an email the next week. Hey, you know, would would you mind giving me a call? And what? yeah, I mean, and that's exactly how it went. Um, Sorry. You know, and, oh, no, I, I mean, I, I owe so much to Jim for that. You know, he, he his graciousness, his, his willing to to take a chance on, you know, yeah. an yeah. idiot from Southwest Missouri. No, that's, yeah. dude, that's badass. Like, seriously, that's awesome to hear. Yeah. Ooh, buddy, good, yeah. good shit. <laughs> I'm taking a shot on that one. That's that's all. Awesome. I mean, just to be able, like, you get. Oh, all right, all right, sorry. Dude. See, this is what happens. Get a couple cheers drinks over and Discord. Start getting honest. Yes, there you go. cheers. <laughs> cling, cling. Um, just you can. I can feel the passion that you have behind it, even now. 
when you're telling us how the stuff that you went through, it's just awesome to hear that, man. Because maybe certain people, maybe when they get to a certain level or whatever, maybe they get like, I don't know, cocky or a little bit too confident type of deal. It's just awesome to hear that you still appreciate well, the medium and everything like that, too. But I think you have to appreciate it. You, I mean, yeah. ultimately, look, it's about love. It, for, mm-hmm. me, for me, I'm making things because I love them. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I have so many friends that have worked in this industry over the years that have come and gone simply because they were like, yeah, you know what? You beat me to it. I was going to ask. Illustration yeah. pays more, you know, movies pay yeah. more. I mean, yeah. I, you know, yep. exactly. You, you, you can go, I've got a buddy right now working in video games that, um, just got the kind of promotion that, that, you know, is, is world changing. And, you know, you, uh, why do I work in comics? Because I want to work in comics because I want right. to tell comic stories. Yeah. You know, otherwise I'd be doing something else. And, and those people, right. those people still love, can love comics. They can do all that, but they've, they've made a different decision for a different path. We joke yeah. sometimes that, that making comics is kind of a bit of a disease. <laughs> okay. Okay. I can understand that. The yeah. story, tell, the storytelling disease. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this- With, Okay, if if I could ask a question in it, which one, if you could choose, which one do you prefer? Do you prefer the illustration side and, you know, like illustration development or kind of like the story side, you know, the writing development, that process? If you had to pick, which one would be your preference? So, so you're going to make me pick? I have to choose just one because that's, that's tough. <laughs> that's tough. Um, I, I think, for okay, for me, a uh, preface for this. For me, okay, um, yeah. I've always v- viewed myself as a storyteller. Okay. Um, I have friends that are such brilliant illustrators. Uh, I have guys I know that can lay down a single image that will knock your socks off. Blow you up. Um, yeah, I got you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and and you know, and there are others that are more that, that can do both. Uh, I think I think one of the best examples of that's Tony Moore. Um, Tony can draw a single image, a single cover that is haunting, that just messes with your brain how good it is. But he can also he's also a fantastic storyteller. And I oh, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. I always went into into comics wanting to tell stories. So I, I always viewed it as storytelling. So I will sacrifice the epic badass image to tell the story. I'll do the thing where, you know, I it has to be about character. It has to be about motivation. It has to be about as much clarity as I can pull off. Nice. And and so I'm always thinking about the storytelling. I'm always thinking about the story. Um, and so that, that influences the way that I write and the way that I draw. Um, I recently have had a couple of experiences where I, my... Um, okay, well, drawing takes a lot of time. It's mm. physically demanding of you. Uh, the Realm, the book that I'm drawing right now, takes longer for me to draw than anything else that I've ever done. I'm working seven days a week, about eight to ten hours a day. Wow. Nice. Just, just nice. to draw this thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's, that's pretty physically demanding of me. Uh, I love it. And I'm having, I, I feel like this is the best work that I've ever done. But, right. but you know, I'm at the same time, I'm like, that's physically demanding. Yeah. Um, I've, I've had a lot of instances lately where I've had opportunities to write more. And I go and I write for four hours in an afternoon. I get quite a lot done. I'm not, my back's not aching afterwards. <laughs> uh, you know, and, and I'm like, oh, yeah. wait a minute. I can just go do that. You know, I can go, um, I can go work in a writer's room somewhere. I can write a spec script. I can do things. Um, but for me, I don't know how to quit drawing. I don't know how nice. to stop. And it haunts me. It really does. Um, so... You know, while I want to be the storyteller, I'm always still part of me is going to be the artist. 
Sure. Gotcha. Gotcha. Now, well answered. So, so that kind of leads into um, how do you feel your creative process for when you're writing and when you're drawing is different? Like, do you kind of like get into the into the groove to do either one differently, or is it just kind of both like sit down and do the work? Um, it's it's very different. Um, I and maybe it's because we we ascribe a romantic action to writing in a way mm -hmm. that we don't to art. I mean, unless you're somebody that's sitting there, um, you know, with, with with beautiful canvases, you know, painting these epic landscapes or whatever it is, uh, you know, splat, you know, Jackson Pollocking split, you know, splashing paint on a canvas. Mm -hmm, um, right. that, there's a romantic notion to that, but but to comic illustration, it's about putting in the work and the detail and the hours. Um, writing, I if, right now um, I'm writing on a project. It's a it's a horror thing that I'm doing, um, and nice. I, I'm really excited about it. Uh, and this project. I had to get out of my studio because I knew that if I was sitting in this room that I'm in right now, my drawing studio, mm -hmm. I would go over and I would ink on a page a little bit. And then I would go <laughs> yeah, over. And, yeah. right. <laughs> there, there would be that call. You know, I, I, I've yeah. got a cover that, that I was, I was desperately needing to finish. And that cover was calling to me, you know, it was like, Hey, you know, over That's here. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so, so hey, Jeremy. I, yeah, hey, buddy. so yeah. <laughs> I I left. Um, I, I decided I was going to write outside of my studio, and I've got a. Um, I'm really involved in the redevelopment of my city of Joplin. We're trying to do okay. exciting things, and uh, a really good friend of ours um, uh, is a build is a building developer. Um, he's a contractor and does a lot of uh, like renovation on old buildings you know some turn of the century uh fantastic architecture and so um there was this room in one of the abandoned buildings that my buddy jeff owns <laughs> and the way that the light hit and the spare nature of that room uh i i it called to me and i know it's 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 silly because i'm, I'm not somebody that believes in <laughs> in the supernatural or anything like that at all. But even though I love writing about it, I don't believe in it. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, but there was something about that room. And I was like, I have to write this story. The one that I'm working on right now in that wow. room, in that abandoned hmm. building. Okay. And so I took a debt, I took a table up there. I took an old writing chair. Um, and I walk, 10 blocks to the building and there's no heat in there. <laughs> there's nothing. It's this, <laughs> this, 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 this cold ass. There's, there's, you know, uh, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> but, um, I'm I writing this story it. and it's the best thing that I've ever written. I think, uh, it's, it's, I, and you know, I'm as somebody that doesn't believe in, in ghosts and monsters and things like that, you know, creatures. Mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, and I should, I, let me, let me, I'm going to do an aside here. I want okay. to, I'm like Fox Mulder, right? I want oh, to. Be, yes. <laughs> yep. Right. I, yep. I, I, I was sitting there the other day. I was sitting there in this building the other day. It's like, I was like, it was dark. It, it had gotten dark and uh, I closed up my laptop. There's, you know, there's no lights in there. And I'm walking, and I have to walk down these creaky old ass stairs, you know, <laughs> uh, in the dark. It, it's pretty, pretty spooky. And I was like, I'm not really scared. Like, I'm, I'm, there's nothing in this. And I was like, if there was something in the dark that like was gonna leap out and eat me, I kind mm -hmm. of welcome. I welcome that because <laughs> okay, at, at least I would have some proof that there's something out there before right. I die. You know, I like some knowledge um, behind that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you know, um, you know, it's kind of like <laughs> I, I'm to the point where I actually am fine with with having some terrifying end if I just get to see a ghost before I go. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I accept that. Okay. okay. Yeah. 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 Noted. Yes. 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 <laughs> Noted. <laughs> I will I remember it. that. 
<laughs> Shit, first so, of all, my wife, she would be like, Why are you tight? What are you doing? Like, yes, we yeah. just, uh, I'm going to go 10 blocks. <laughs> right. This creepy building right fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so, nah, you know, awesome. uh, take you back though. The, the writing, though, I, I need that. I want that. I want that romantic. Mm-hmm. special you know i i like to go and write in hotel rooms um nice, i like to nice. you know i'll write somewhere um completely uncomfortable or something different um i have problems writing in public necessarily i really like the isolation mm-hmm. of it mm-hmm. you know uh and may, maybe i saw the beginning of misery I don't want okay. to get my yeah. I don't want to get my feet broken or whatever. But right, uh, sure. But but you know, I I you know, in a cabin somewhere in the snow, on your own, finishing something. I I, I gotcha. love I love that. Yeah. Um, r- art for me, the drawing is, you know, and I've been doing this professionally, um, in comics for fifteen years now. So, I've been Duh. doing it long enough that I sit down and I draw, you know, I have, you know, maybe some days it's harder than others. Sometimes I'm not feeling it. Sometimes I, yeah, it's got that fault. I yeah. yeah, I'm tired, but like, I just draw and that's my, you know, that's, my, that's what I do. And I, I yeah. love it sometimes and I hate it sometimes. And that's, but, yeah. but the writing though, there's magic there in a way that, that it's a different, I, let, let me, let me say this. It's a different kind of magic. There's okay. something about looking at a blank page of something and then making something amazing on it. Uh, I got you. you know, the realm covers lately have been really special for me in the way that like I'm, I'm sitting back and I'm like, I just, this was a blank page <laughs> and now it's this yeah. you know, kid standing on a mountaintop looking at a giant rhino man yeah. walking by, you know, like, yeah. like said, you know. Yeah, oh yeah, that yeah. one's tough. That yeah. one's nice. I like that one. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know those things. Those things speak to me in a really interesting way. But um, yeah, it is different. It is a different feeling. Cool. So you mentioned the new project you're working on is a, a horror comic, and I've seen you say or heard you say, I guess, in other interviews that you kind of your career kind of started in crime and horror. Is that correct? Yeah, a lot more. Um, a lot of the things that I really worked on for a long time were more. Um, reality-based things with slanting towards kind of crime stuff or horror stuff. Okay. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. realistic action, I think. Um, it didn't until I until I worked at Marvel on the, the Iron Man Captain America book, um, I hadn't really done anything that was superhero-related. Um, I, uh, back in 1996-ish, I was in San Diego... Um, showing my portfolio around to anybody that would look at it, hoping mm-hmm. to kind of hoping to kind of line something up. Mm-hmm. And I showed my samples to this editor that's going to actually remain nameless just to protect the guilty. But sure. he was a, <laughs> he was a dick. He was terrible. <laughs> oh man! Um, you know he did the, he did the he did the like what is this? Just, what, what what are yeah. you what are you even doing? Oh. Here? Yeah, you know thing yeah. and and. You know, I, I was really hoping to get into comics, and and I think that um, that review, the way that he approached that, um, you know, really it affected me. And I I went home from the con that night, and I sat in my room, you know, at this you know San Diego Comic Con. This is big, exp- and I, and I was like, am right. I doing this? Am I doing this right? You know, what am I doing? Yeah. Right, uh, right. It was a crossroads. And then yep. the next day, I had a Marvel Comics portfolio review um, with Ralph Macchio. What? And, and um, <laughs> is that right? Am I, yeah. No, no, no. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm just, you're just living my, I'm living my yeah. dream through you. Like, okay, gosh. okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was like, "Holy <clears throat> shit, man, this up. Um, but no, 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 uh, no, 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 no. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, but um, but but you know, so so he was he edited all the Ghostwriter stuff, um, which was which was huge for me. Um, you know, Javier Soltera and Mark Textera working on that book, 
were kind of a holy grail thing. Um, I, you know, mm-hmm. I, I loved all the Midnight Suns and Darkhold and all those crazy books. And um, and I'm sitting down with him, and and he's looking through my stuff and was very thoughtful about it and really, really, you know, kind of took his time and was looking at it. And he said, you know, I really like what you're doing, but. I'm looking at what you're doing in these superhero samples that you're showing me. And he said, I don't know that you're a superhero artist. And he's like, I'm I'm not saying you can't do superhero stuff. Please don't take it that way. But I think that you are more of a vertigo artist. I think that you, you do something with character moments, with beats that is really important. He's like, High action may not be your strong suit, but character stuff, you're really doing something here. And he said, when I when you get home, I want you to, here's my card, I want you to email me, and I will email you a couple of scripts that I really think do the kind of thing that you're doing. And so I did this. I, 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 I emailed him and sent me a couple of scripts from um, from like more it was it was still from ghostwriter stuff but it was it was kind of these moments these these character moments where you know Danny was dealing with the the weight of everything that was going on and and he, you know and, and he okay. was he was turning into ghostwriter and 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 that that moment for me really guided that me. Was, yeah. 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 And okay. and so a lot of my career after that kind of became about more grounded things. It became about about those things that that um were kind of influenced by by that conversation with Ralph. Instead of quitting comics like like the other wanted me to do, um yeah. you know, yeah. I I really took it to heart and I started working on character stuff. And so that was the longest way around your question. Yeah, a lot of stuff started with four and five. Um, no, yeah. no. It reminds cool. me a lot of that. Uh, I think it was on was it on Netflix or something like that where they had. I'm sorry, I'm going off on a tangent, but it's like it was a. Uh, I think it was like a, they followed these three artists that went to a convention, and like one dude was like a marine or something like that, who was like really good illustrator. Another dude was like another kind of like passionate artist. And it's kind of the same story. Like he went to get like a portfolio review and man, they tore his shit apart, like left sideways, everything. But he, he persevered through it. And now he became, I think like, it was just his style was different, but now I think he became like a, an illustrator for some main publisher or something like that. It's just that That's cool. he, he received this information. It's just that he decided to like not completely knock him down. Um, type of, I forget the name. I, I, once I come to it later on, I'll ping it to you. It was, it's a yeah. pretty cool joint. Yeah, please, please. I want to. I want to watch that. That sounds great. So, um, so I was kind of wondering too. You know, you started in crime and horror. Are those are those genres that like you were a long time hardcore fan of, or is it kind of something you fell into because like it was what what was available? Um. Yeah, I was a fan of those. Definitely with horror. Um, <laughs> so. When I talk about not not believing in ghosts and that sort of thing, I, I'm gonna. This is another aside, but um, uh, at 12 years old, I was scared of everything. I was okay. absolutely. Um, I remember when I was really little, there was this ad for this movie called Magic, starring okay. Anthony Hopkins. It was about a he was a ventriloquist, and the ventriloquist dummy was alive and and he was killing people. Um, <laughs> And there was this ad where the dummy talks, you know, the trailer for the movie was the dummy talking to the audience. Hello. You know, oh, okay. And, and it's so creepy. And I remember watching like that came on the TV and I remember like, and I had to have been four or five years old, like screaming and running into my mouth, <laughs> freaking out. Yeah. And... I was scared of everything. Um, and I would see these trailers, you know, because they used to, you know, play on just TV. They play, you know, a trailer for the new Freddy movie or the new, J- you know, mm. Nightmare on Elm Street. Just, you know, I was so terrified of 
you know, Michael Myers and, and Jason Voorhees. And, and so, um, I knew who all of these characters were and I saw these, I would go to the video store and I'd walk by the horror aisle and I'd almost have to sh hide my eyes, but I was also fascinated by these things. And, and so I was so scared by them that finally I decided the only way that I was going to face this was I was going to watch every horror movie that was on the shelves. You know, oh, this okay. is the, yeah, this is the late, 80s, you know, early nineties. So you went to video stores and you had this guy that just didn't care at all behind the counter. Yeah, they, would, they, would, they would rent the most disgusting things to, to, you know, it's like, Oh, microwave massacre. Huh? Okay. Well, enjoy that one. You know? Yeah. <laughs> um, and so I watched every horror film that was on the shelves at my local video store. Um, and I found that I loved, I loved horror and I loved the idea that the strength that I had was if you're scared of Freddy, you can watch Freddy die at the end. He comes back. Sure. Okay. But you always watch him. You, you always see him defeated. Right. And, and I then was fascinated by monsters and these creatures. And I was fascinated by the idea that, you know, I, as I started to even look back further at the Universal Studios movies, I, I loved the Gill Man from The Creature from the Black Lagoon. I found Frankenstein not to be scary, but to be sympathetic. Um, okay. You know, I, even, even into some of the slasher stuff and stuff like that. Like I just I found it fascinating and I and I really liked I, this thing and and so as an adult now telling horror stories, I realize that I'm the guy walking through a building that probably anybody would be like, uh, uh, don't do that, no, 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 you know you're gonna die. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm the guy that you're talking to in a horror movie. Like, don't don't go in that room is dark. Don't go in there. <laughs> and I'm doing it, and and I. I every horror movie that I watch now, every line that I write of horror stuff is me trying to scare myself. I want, I oh, want to cool. feel. That's... Okay. I want to feel like yeah, I want to feel like yeah. that twelve-year-old again. I want right. to feel what being scared actually feels like because it doesn't exist for me. The only thing that I'm scared of is is the safety of my family is caring about my friends is right. you know the state of of the world around me like those are the things mm -hmm. that scare me out but like i don't you know nah. i'm not nah. really scared of yeah. monsters i don't know man clowns man they freak me the hell out <laughs> but but i understand exactly what you're saying seriously well, that, that, my friend, is because you're a logical human being and you realize that, <laughs> that, 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 well, a, a, that a grown ass no, man. It was, it was my dad. My dad yeah. did it. My dad made me watch it comic or it, uh, the it movie, the original joint, uh -huh, like back yeah. in the day. I had no business watching that this time. Like, <laughs> seriously, dad. But that thing has traumatized me. You see, like Ronald McDonald and stuff. I'm like, I'm like mm -mm, don't get too close. Don't, don't do it. Don't. No. That's, you have that's no business. Yeah. <laughs> but that's awesome. That's a good concept. That's a good mentality of like you want to write something that's going to scare you. I like that. Well, it's important, and I think that um, you know, I think if you listen to um, Stephen King speak about his writing, or Clive Barker, or any you know, um, any horror novelists out there, um, fair enough. They yeah. talk about their own fears and things that bother them and things that you know the things that i don't really see much with the things that actually do creep me out mm -hmm. the idea of of tur turning around <clears throat> and seeing someone standing shock still staring at me with a frightening smile on their face scares me more than you know a giant monster, you know, gotcha. coming yeah. out of the sewers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I pick and choose out things and I, and I think about scenes and I think about, you know, like, can I give myself chills with this? Can I actually like, like create an, an element of fear in myself? Um, you know, I think a lot about seventies movies 
you know, like Rosemary's Baby and The Exorcist. Um, mm-hmm. I I don't know if you guys have seen it, but recently uh, the movie Hereditary. Um, I haven't yet, but I, I want to. It's 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 kind of this really disturbing, but okay. it's disturbing in that way that like it's about moments and it's about okay picking those moments and so you know i I seek that when i write yeah okay um yeah i had a question lined up and then i lost it oh uh so you were talking earlier about how like when you were first getting started you were told that you weren't a superhero artist but i know you've i know like you know looking over your your credits you've done superheroes uh now you've done batwoman you've done Batman, Red Hood, and all that. Um, so do you feel your art has kind of evolved over the years, either either by, like, you've gotten better at it, or maybe as trends change, you change your art to fit them or to counteract them? I feel like... I feel like every page that I draw is a learning experience. It's a, it's a, almost like a puzzle. Hmm. I'm, so, okay. I'm, so, I'm solving puzzles. Um, I, every project that I take, I try to pick out a new thing, a new goal. Okay. I try to, um, you know, uh, focus on scope or on getting better with dynamic shots or drawing, you know, you draw things that like, I'm like, well, I'm not very good at cars right now. So this, this book is going to be about me trying to draw better cars. It's just really like upping my game. Um, one of the best examples is, um, for me was Batwoman. Mm -hmm. Bat, Batwoman. I really wanted to get better at drawing hair. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that, that was, I mean, okay. it's, it's silly, but like, I wanted to draw gorgeous hair on women. Yeah, no, Batwoman has a lot of hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah she does. Uh, and, but like, I wanted to get better at drawing, you know, and by by proxy, then, you know, you draw better hair on men, you draw better mm-hmm. hair on women. But I right. wanted to get better. And, and and the other thing that I focused on with with Batwoman was, was clothes, because that book really became about about her wearing awesome vintage clothes and having okay. awesome and gray hair. And so um, each project is about a different thing for me. And mm. I try to just get better learning about, um, you know, how to, how to sell the action better. Um, you know, that, that's always an important thing. Uh, capturing moments that, that, you know, uh, little bits of business, maybe, maybe giving characters, um, you know, maybe this guy likes to adjust his glasses all the time or whatever it is, you know, okay. I, I try to pick out things in each thing and, and it makes me a better artist. Uh, so nice. once again, that's the long way around saying <laughs> me learning to draw superhero stuff was me focusing on, uh, I, I was drawing new X caliber for mm-hmm. Marvel. Um, and uh, I, I got to I got to work with Chris Claremont, which was in a lot of ways, you know, this, you know, he was an icon of my childhood, right? Mm-hmm. Those, those those X Men issues, and then, you know, I got to draw on Excalibur, which when Excalibur dropped, you know, you had Chris Claremont and Alan Davis working on this book, and it blew my mind. You know, it was like this is fantastic, but then I had to figure out how to draw the action of that, how to draw that many characters fighting on one page okay and, you know it's you know and i i don't always pull it off i'm i'm not you know um i'm not cocky enough nor uh blind to my own weaknesses enough to say that <laughs> i get it right every time um i don't right but i tell stories and i try and i love drawing things Okay. Yeah. 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 I figure somewhere you got to be like 
you have to be your worst critic. And then at some point, as an illustrator, I don't know if you can really ever say like, yes, that is the best drawing that I've ever done. Cause you always gonna wanna push it. You always wanna be better. Like you're gonna be, every day you're gonna get better, especially if you keep working at your craft. Right. Well, and, and you have to look at it and say like, like, okay, well that was really good in the moment. Right, right, I'm gonna, right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at that in a month. And yeah, exactly. If, if, You'll find some. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. You Agreed. know, and and one of the things that's really interesting about about comic books is that you typically draw something, and then thirty to ninety days later, it comes out on the stands. So no. you're already a different artist by that point. <laughs> You've grown yeah. and changed. Yeah. And so hey, you man. look at that. Oh, yeah. you're like, well, that's, that's not very good, buddy. Why's well, my, <laughs> well, my female's face look so man? <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Got you. You. <laughs> and and so you know, I, I I'm always trying to get a little bit better. And you know, if if an artist tells you that they're they've learned everything that there is to learn, nah, they're probably. Yeah. Yeah, they're probably stagnant. Yeah. They're probably, yeah. you know. Yep, agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Completely. You know, for for context, uh, Tyke also has a what's your degree in Tyke? Design or illustration? It's it's both. It's first graphic okay. design, but then at the art institute, it's media arts, computer animation. Oh, nice. Uh, okay. It's like it's it's serious. It's seriously a fancy way of being like, man, I could not focus on one thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it was like, okay, yep, illustration over here. All right, well, I bet animation over here. All right, bet yeah. motion graphic over there. All right, bet now I'm doing ZBrush over here. Okay, bet. Uh, like it's just so much shit. I just I don't know. It's like a little squirrel, <laughs> I guess. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't figure out <laughs> one spot, which is I don't know. And, and off on another tangent, like. To try and like focus on one medium now, I think is like a crutch. I think it hurts you when it comes down to it. I think like you got to be not necessarily proficient at something or one particular thing. Just got to be able to wear multiple hats. I think just to succeed. I, mean, I think so. But... No, no. I, I I'm, I'm gonna agree or disagree with you at the same time. So this is where. Um, oh. No, which is basically how most arguments go. Uh, <laughs> um, my my disagreement there would be um, it does help if you can specialize in anything, okay. just because because like if you wear too many hats, you don't ever have that one that you that really looks fantastic on you. Um, yeah, the truth. Yep. But I will say that. Men and women right now that are working in this industry that can do all of it have an advantage on me. Uh, I can I can paint, you know. I can I can I can like sit down in a few days, probably three four days, and fully paint an image. Okay, but I can't do it as fast or as proficiently as me penciling and inking a cover and then giving mm-hmm. to Nick Filardi and having him color it. I can't I do you. as good, I can't yeah. do as good a job. You. So if you can do all the things, you do have an advantage because you can just sit there and go, nah, I don't need anybody else. I'm gonna yeah. do it all. Right. I'm good. Right. right. You know, so I, I do I do again, I, I disagree with you because I like I feel like specialization does help you in the way that you get really good at something. But then I also think mm-hmm. that like, you know, you can, you're probably better off than I am in the long run. So yeah, there's that. What? I think, no, no, definitely. I, I love constructive criticism. And I love organic conversations like this. It's just like, even this, in this day and age, especially with, you know, like everybody now, like you can, you know, you can take your work on the go now. Like if you want to do digital work, like, okay, just go ahead and get your iPad, get your pencil sketchbook or whatever if you're using procreate boom you can illustrate right off the cuff you know what i'm saying i i have sought that by the way um i i'm a traditional artist in the way that that mm-hmm. you know 90 percent of my workflow is completely just me with pencils paper and any pens yep. um but um recently i was on vacation with 
you know, was was in Oregon on vacation, and uh, we were on the coast, and I needed to finish inking. Uh, it was four pages of an issue of, of the realm. And I had to do this to hit my deadline. I had mm-hmm. to get those done while I was away. Had oh, to. Oh, man. Yeah. So, so I took my pages and I took my yeah. quills and my yeah. inks and the whole oh, nine yards. Yeah. Yeah. You know, right? yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yes. But, you know, but, I, but I sat at the kitchen table and yeah. my back, yeah. and my back, back hurt. And yes. like, you know, <laughs> and that's awesome. <laughs> but 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 I look at buddies, friends of mine though that that you know they'll sit there on on Procreate or on uh, Clip Studio Paint on oh, their yeah, iPad. Yes, sir. Yep. And they're doing everything. Yeah. Yeah. Soup to nuts mm-hmm. all the way through, yep. and and yep. and I'm like, yep. Why why do I have all this stuff when I could literally just have my iPad? I got you. And this, and this magic pencil. <laughs> that, that kinda, <laughs> you know. That's exactly the way to put it. This magic yeah. pencil that does my ellipses and all my perspective for me. <laughs> exactly. Awesome. exactly. Yeah. Um, so That's I don't amazing. know. I'm. Yeah, you know what you like, though. You know what's comfortable well, for you. You know what's home. Yeah, so. Right. But I, but I think that there is going to be a point very soon where I'm going to have to make a decision. And, I got you. you know, I love. You know, for instance, there's always the talk about original art, and yeah, and yeah. you know being able being able to sell your art, which is yeah. which is nice. I have I have a lot of people that, that love that. You know, they want that art and they want to support me that way. And you know, it's nice. I can uh, I can you know I can buy my uh, my my expensive scotch with uh, with that money. Mm, yes. <laughs> but but um, well, but, you know, well, yeah. Oh yeah, no, it's worth every penny. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, but I, I still have to figure out a way to make my process attainable, to make sure that I, I can, you know, mm-hmm. that I can meet your deadlines can, and all that diligence. Yeah, 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 and and yeah. like what, you know, sometimes I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm like, I'm drawing something and I'm using white paint and painting back in lines. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. If I was doing yes. this on an iPad, I would hit the white, and I would be, it'd be so easy. Yeah, yeah. Or like, you know, draw, drawing in like, uh, you know, like dry brush effect on something, and I'm like, this is a, this would just be a, a brush that I would use, gotcha. and it'd be so gotcha. simple. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. No, no, that's awesome, man. <laughs> Took the whole stuff with you. That's badass. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, okay. So you talked about like some people, you know, do some people are jacks of all trades and can do everything soup to nuts, and other people are more specialized. Uh, and, and I know you've done illustration and writing. Do you do you think someday you'd ever want to be like a go full auteur on a book and just do do everything in it, or do you prefer the collaboration process more? <sighs> I, man, it gets tricky. Um, I don't, <laughs> I don't ever really see myself fully like doing everything on a book, mm-hmm. unless it was like short stories or something like that. Okay. Uh, you know, um, I've toyed for a long time with doing. We joked, and I. It's such hubris to even suggest this, but I, I want to do like a anthology um, uh, where I do a series of short stories and then collect them, mostly, oh, okay. mostly uh, just like, like like weird genre stuff. Nice. And if I did that, I think that I would do um, the majority of some of them. You know, I like the idea of writing something and then drawing it and then coloring it. And right. then, you know, laying in the letters. I like that. But I also, if I'm writing it and drawing it, that's probably enough. And and I think that I've my work has never looked better than when Nick Filardi colors it. So mm. I have to convince Nick that for the rest of our lives, 
<laughs> I know where you're going. He's, he's, he, he's, he's, he's got to he's got to always work with me. Right. Um, <laughs> nice. You know, uh, Tom Smauer does something with the design and the lettering on both the beauty and the realm that I love. And, you know, um, this is a small aside, but I, but I, I do want to kind of talk about collaboration for a moment and the importance of finding people that you love working with mm -hmm. and, and kind of yeah, respecting yeah. those people. Um, comics is hard guys. You know, it's, it's, it's a <laughs> lot of work, you know, uh, these things that we read in 10 minutes or so, um, take people months of their lives yeah. and, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, you know, um, Nick Filardi and Thomas Maurer, um, and actually, uh, Nyung Wilson, Nyung Kim, um, work on the beauty in the realm. Um, and they are colorists and letters and, um, they do things month in and month out on deadlines that people shouldn't have to work under <laughs> and they make us look really really good every single there have been instances where, where thomas mauer our our letterer has had to letter something and he's like you know i know what you're trying to do here but like you didn't give me enough space to do the thing and he's <laughs> made and he's made it work he's done excellent you know um mm. excellent work so i i do want to just take us you That's know give, give mad props yeah. to those people because they uh yeah. deserve it. Oh, take your time with that for sure. Keep it coming. That's that's badass, yeah. dude. Yeah. Well, and I know too. As an aside, like you brought up Thomas Maurer, that that dude seems to be lettering everything. I mean, I remember <laughs> there was one there was one uh, episode of this podcast me and Tyke did where just like totally without even meaning to, we ended up reviewing like three comics that he lettered. So, yeah, cool. yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well, look, Thomas is German. Okay. And so he has every, I mean, and this is such a stereotype thing. If he listens to this, he's going to, he's going to, oh, damn it, Jeremy. And, you know, but, um, but you know what? He, let's, let's even take it away from, from his, his, his nationality. Thomas is a professional Thomas. Mm -hmm. And, and I, in, in an industry of artists, of of people you know that sometimes act like children and and make funny things um mm -hmm. professionalism is a fantastic trait like give me mm -hmm. give me somebody with skill and then professionalism and i'll show you somebody that gets to work for the rest of their life and get paid dollars for it right right got it got yeah it. you know i mean i mean talent talent is a wonderful thing, you know, but I've seen people that, that can draw things that, that make you cry that can't ever turn anything in or get anything right. done. Gotcha. You know, and, and, and that, you know, they don't always, you know, stay. Yeah. You know? And, and, yeah. and, you know, if like, if you want, if you really want to do that, please be a painter and you'll probably make a fantastic fortune. You know, please, please gotcha. be a single illustration person. But if you want to make comics, you got to do it on a, on a schedule and on, and Ooh, you got to be, be able to cranking them out. Well, yeah, you got to yeah. be able to put up with stuff. I mean, I've, I've oh. had instances, you know, I have good intentions, you know, I, I really try, but there have been instances where I have asked my crew to do really, really hard thing. And you know what Nick says every single time on the colors and you know what Thomas says every single time on the letters, yeah, I'll make this happen. Nayang guys nice. on the beauty. She colored a book and she you know, she had it was a you know a tough time and, and scheduling was really rough and she made it happen. And and th so nice. those people, you know, uh I will I will buy dinner drinks every single time I see those people. <laughs> I, nice. I, I love them. excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Man, you're a good dude. Nice. I'm all right. I'm all <laughs> nice, right. man. No, I said no bullshit. I don't, I don't like me throwing that shit out there all the time like that. But seriously, man, I can I can feel that. That's that's dope to hear. Seriously, you know we we work really hard to uh, to be, I don't know just just be worthy of people in our lives. 
Right. Um, right. You know, and not, you know, not, I, so you're not taking for granted and everything like that, showing appreciation. Huh? Yep. Well, you know, I, I don't know if we do that enough anymore. Um, mm hmm. You know, I, I think that, that we are in a culture where um, we, we like to take down. We like to, you know, and I give shit. Yeah. I mean, I do. I do. I'll, I'll bust balls or whatever, uh, you know, but like, but like when it comes to appreciating people and I hope that the people that I know, that I work with know that I love them and that I appreciate them because they make what I do possible and they make it sing. And, you yeah. know. No. I'm always going to give that love. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Um, so let's see. Let's uh, go back to your work for uh, for DC and Marvel. First, I wanted to ask. I'm a I'm a huge Batman Gotham fan. So what is what was your favorite project in the Gotham universe? So what is what was your favorite project in the Gotham universe? How's that for you? Was that good? Oh, that oh, bad, <laughs> bad horse. Bad horse. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, Ready. Man. Let's go. <laughs> um I've been spoiled, man. Yeah. I, I I have had I got to work on Arkham Reborn with David Hine. Wow. I got to work on the Red Hood with Jed Winnick. Yeah. Damn. And then again on a later iteration um, with James Tynion for, okay. for um, the reboot. And then Damn. I got I got to work on on Batwoman, which. Each of those were so important to me in different ways. Okay. Um, man. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. like asking you to pick your favorite kid here. It really yeah. is because they're they're <laughs> they're they're all beautiful and all. You know, yeah. I'm I'm, I'm going to go rather than answer it necessarily. I'm going to go through. I'm going to talk about what I love about each one. Okay, smart um, man. Let's David do it. Hine, David Hine is one of the best writers in this industry and writes things that do manage to creep me out. And again, I've talked right. about this time and time again throughout this. Stuff doesn't scare me, but David gets it. He does things, and he's a sweet, wonderful man that I've had the chance to work with on the Bat stuff, and okay. then on the Darkness, our run on the Darkness. We had 16 issues of the Darkness together, and each and every time, David managed to amaze me. I, I love working with that man. So, so that was, you know, the Arkham Reborn stuff was special. We created a few new villains for Batman. We... Uh, I got to work on Detective Comics with him during that run. It was fantastic. A um, lot of pressure. Yeah, no, no pressure. At all. <laughs> <laughs> I, had, I, I, I had to figure. Out, I had to figure out how the hell to draw, draw Batman in that. Um, I, oh I, man! I, I finally Ooh. got it. I finally got it right at the uh, at the very end of. Uh, nice. You know, um, <laughs> but um, but. Uh, you know, and then the Red Hood. Um, I came in on the third issue of a six-issue miniseries. Uh, I, I was really a fill-in guy for that. They needed a guy to come in and just catch them up. And then Judd saw the work that I was doing, and Mike Marks, my editor, and Janelle Siegel... They were my editors, and they were like, "Hey, you know, you're really, you're really doing a great job on this. Uh, why, don't, why don't you stay?" And you know, that that experience working on the Red Hood, and and kind of, you know, I don't know that Jason Todd as coming back was my favorite idea. Mm -hmm. okay. But you know oh, okay. what? By the end of that book, I love Jason Todd, and I <laughs> love you know. Nice. You know, uh, you know, it was, it was, you know what, it was so the point where I, I realized 
having fans come up and talk about the fact that I draw pretty boys that I draw. Fans. <laughs> That's an awesome compliment. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I. You know what? I'm going to make that even. Let, let me let me do better. Um, draw so you know, drawing handsome men and having having fans come up and uh, and talk about you know loving that. I I was all in. Damn. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah. Have you, yeah. Nice. So uh, you know that that was a special experience too. And then. Um, I had a fan say, you should, you should draw Batwoman. I think you'd be really great at it. And I, I responded back and I said, there's no way I would be able to draw Batwoman. J.H. Williams has put his stamp on it and, and is doing it perfectly. I don't ever need to come onto this book. Fast forward, J.H. Williams asks me to come onto the book and Ooh. and be in and be involved you know we're wow. talking about a, a, a year year and a half later mm-hmm. I'd, I'd, I'd really like for you to come on and be involved um things changed he ended up leaving the book but and i and i got to work on the book with with my my uh, longtime friend mark andraco who we did the manhunter stuff uh in streets of gotham <laughs> together um mm-hmm. You know, and and Mark and I got to tell what I view as um, one of the best character pieces in superhero comics. Like for me, for, for Mark and I, it was really about the love story between Kay Kane and and really. It was, it was about it was about the love story there, and then the deterioration of, of a relationship, and okay. and I love drawing Batwoman. I love the hair. I love the costume. I love all that black leather. It's just awesome. Yeah. But I love drawing Kate in her everyday life, and I love dealing with telling a relationship story. Um, okay. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, it, it was very, very important for me, and and especially I, th- I think the idea that I got to tell a um a, a lesbian love story and and mm-hmm. with respect to it and really trying to do it the right way. Nice. Uh, yeah. You know, that was very important for me. I think that. Yeah. Uh, representation is incredibly important in comics. I think that that you know um, we that book really hit at a time where um, I was having people fans come up and say thank you for doing a book, thank you for working on a book that that is a story that feels like it's for me, and that oh, meant okay. a lot to me. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I bet. I mean, I can't imagine how it would feel to like have you know to work on something and like you said. You you put a lot of hours into it, and then someone comes up to you and says like, you know, this this touched me. It's you know, it wasn't just like a passing, you know, pulp for them. Well, and, and that's that's yeah, and that that's the thing. I think that um, we all take from comics our own thing it's 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 so much right. about you know yeah. any yeah. kind of entertainment you watch you watch a show and you, and you see somebody and you're like oh you know like that character's not like me at all yeah. you know what that, that character's not like you that's fine but but you know this person over here is is, is very specifically for somebody and right. you right. know and i got to tell a story about about a a an amazing brilliant badass lesbian superhero well you know what i'm not not any of that stuff but you know what i i i got to, I got to help represent it for other people and right and, yeah. and it yep. you know yep. it i don't know it, it felt good it, it was um kind of a beautiful thing so those three books you know really meant a lot to me and you know i did yeah. other stuff in there but but really you know those those um I'm incredibly grateful for my time at DC Comics and what I got to do there. Cool. Um, 
All right, so so the next thing was uh, just related to DC Comics. How does creating for DC compare to creating for Marvel? And, you know, like I said earlier, I'm not looking for dirt. I just want to, like, do they have different standards and conventions or different, you know, uh, is, is it different or is it kind of like going from one boss to the next? I had a really, I've been very lucky in my career in that yeah. I've worked with fantastic people. I've had, you know, whether it was Nick Lowe over at Marvel um, or um, working with, uh, you know, McMartz or, um, you know, anyone at, at DC. I, I, I had great editorial. I worked with, with really fantastic writers. Um, I'm kind of spoiled in my career. <laughs> in that I didn't really have a lot of um, hard experiences. Mm. Uh, I, I really appreciate, and, and I, don't, I don't know that this always happens. I have a lot of friends that kind of tell me otherwise, but whenever you're hired and they know what you do and how you do it, when they look at and they're like, well, we brought you on because we know that you can tell a story and that you can do this, and then they don't micromanage the hell out of you. Like, that's mm. a fantastic feeling. Yeah, I was, yeah. Yeah. I was I was brought on to Bat Books because I could tell a story in in the way that they wanted. So they okay. brought me on and they didn't really mess with me. You know, I, I you know, um I was I think with Marvel I was learning so much and it was so hard for me that it was a more difficult experience, but that had nothing to do with Marvel. That had to do right. with me, oh, gosh, me yeah. at that time. Yeah, and me, me figuring out who and what I was, and me figuring out how to draw comic books fast and reliably. Mm, right, right. You know, um, so you know, I, I think that my answer is that they they were incredibly similar. Uh, they they had a lot of faith in me and let me do my thing, and you know, I, I think that um, I think that the bigger difference I think almost comes in like working in creator own comics and working in mainstream okay. comics you okay. know that that's really where the thing changes right right speaking yeah. of uh do you want to talk about the beauty now yeah sure let's do it So how did you, um, okay, well, first of all, for anyone who hasn't read The Beauty, you want to give like a little elevator pitch, a little ad for it? Sure. The Beauty is about an STD that makes you beautiful. So, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's a story about, it's a very near future story about an, um, a sexually transmitted disease that comes along and you get it. And it kind of makes you look Hollywood hot, okay. Which, which is a terrible term, and I apologize for <laughs> for that kind of representation. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm not really saying that. <laughs> but it's that true. But yeah, I'm not really saying that that's how we should look. But but that's what disease does. Yeah, it makes us thinner. It it, it you know oh, we, we we get the hair back we want. We maybe lose the hair that we don't want. That, <laughs> You know, uh, yeah. You know, it, it 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 makes you know everybody starts to look like a model. Okay. And then and then two years into it, people and, and there's no side effects. There's you know you have slight, very 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 slight fever all the time. Mm -hmm. But then two years in, people start dying, and it's bad. And yeah. so the story is just <laughs> us examining. Bad. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Minor side so, effects. Mine, mine, yeah, mine. <laughs> um, okay, so how did you, uh, I mean, how, how did that project come about? You know, what's the, I guess, to use comic book terms, the origin story of the beauty? Um, I had been, I was working with uh, Philip Sablick at the time at Top Cow, and Philip and I had a lot of conversations about me and my career path and he kept saying jeremy you're a storyteller you you need to be writing too and he was incredibly incredibly um 
you know, instrumental in, in encouraging mm-hmm. me to do that. It was fantastic. Um, and I was trying to figure out a story. I was out in LA and we were at an outdoor mall and everybody in LA is going to be like, yes, we know that mall, but everybody else is going to be like, why don't you just, I can't remember which one it was, but it was near, it was near the offices and, and we were sitting out having lunch and I was watching these beautiful people walk by just everybody that I, that kind of passed. I was like, pretty sure that was an actor. Mm, that that, that had been a mall. Oh man. That, you know, and, and, and I started thinking yeah. about the links that we go to, to look that way. You know, we're all, mm. yeah, you know, you, you, you think about the laundry list. The process. The, the, yeah. yeah the, you know, you think yeah. about the things you hate about yourself, right? Like, Oh man, if right, I just, right. If I didn't have this gut, you know, if I didn't have whatever it was, you know, you mm-hmm. think about things and, and you're like, if I was this or if I was that, you know, if you have, if you have uh, straight hair, you want curly hair. If you have curly hair, you have, you know, if you're bald, mm-hmm. you want luxurious hair, you know, yeah. I don't, do people you know, with, self-conscious. Yeah. You know, do people with luxurious yeah. hair, do they actually ever wish that they're bald? I don't, I don't know that that happens, but, <laughs> but, um, you know, but like, but we go to these links to look away. We'll, we'll have, we'll, you know, we'll get augmented. We'll go on crash diets and all this stuff. And I was just like thinking about those links that we go to and then what if we could just get it and then what would be the call? And that, that's pretty much where the book came from. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So um, it's ongoing, correct? I feel like I should know this. Yes. Yeah. Um, we are on 26. Uh, we are moving into the final phase of the book. Um, nice. it's, okay. You know, uh, we love telling this story. I, I work on it with my buddy Jason A. Hurley. He's he's the co-writer on the project. And uh, Thomas Natchlik is the artist and on, on it now. Uh, I started out drawing the book, but I, I really... Um, whenever it came time for me to work, move on to the realm and draw the realm, I needed people that mm-hmm. I can trust. Thomas, Thomas has been the, um, the long, the long standing artist on the book. Uh, he's done three arcs now and he's going to oh, finish wow. up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. That's yeah. Dope. He, yeah. You know, um, but yeah, you know, I, I feel like stories need to end and I feel like that. Yeah. I agree. That, yeah. Yeah. We could keep telling this, but I think there is more value in getting to a good inning spot that we feel comfortable with rather than, you know, like trying to pad it. We'll see, I don't, I don't, oh, yeah, yeah. A, a question with that. Is it kind of like, uh, is it kind of like you'll have an idea for the inning and then you'll spit it off to like Jason and whatnot and then y'all kind of like brainstorm together? Or is it like, no, nah, no, nah, I have this solid idea. This is the way it's going to be. Or how do, how do you come to that? Uh, final decision I have the absolute I've had the fortune of working with one of my best friends in the world awesome. Jason Jason okay. and I sit in my studio and just write together and awesome. it's a com- it's a conversation okay. it's just from, yeah. from moment okay. one you know we started we started writing this together because I was like I was we were coming back from a small con in St. Louis right after I got back from LA and I was like, hey, l- let me tell you about this thing. And <laughs> we sat together on this five-hour car ride. And by the time we stopped, we, we had it planned out. We knew what we were doing. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so you know, it's it's the best of experiences that way. Yeah. 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 That's like, that's cool. So you had the, the whole, <clears throat> excuse me, the whole story arc plotted out in that five hours? Um, we knew the first story arc. We knew the characters. Okay. We knew the whole okay. thing. Um, you know, we didn't. I, probably, I would say within three months, we had written the first issue. We were outlining the rest of the story, and we knew what we wanted to do beyond that story. We didn't know okay. if we were like we didn't know initially if we were going to get anything beyond six issues. Mm-hmm. So we kind of told a story that had a, a definite ending. And, and if, mm-hmm. if you, if you read the, like, like the book has the beauty, um, 
the first the end of the first arc is kind of in a lot of ways the end of the story okay and then we go back and we tell stories set kind of before that but everything right. dovetails into the story and leads okay. to a bigger thing and and like the last arc of this is really going to be us getting back to that moment at the end of that first book and saying this uh, is what the world is okay yeah. okay smart good job you guys yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> once, once, once again we're all we're okay yeah we're all right <laughs> um okay so let's let's uh let's move on to the realm is this cool sure i lost my copy oh here it is <laughs> So again, for anyone who hasn't read it, you want to give a little elevator pitch for it? Um, yeah. So The Realm is a post-apocalyptic high fantasy book. It's basically, um, let's use super simple terms. It's uh, mm -hmm. kind of like uh, The Walking Dead meets Dungeons and Dragons. And yep. yeah, it's yep. instead, instead of a instead of a post-apocalyptic story like an alien invasion or a zombie apocalypse, the thing that we lose to the thing that that you know destroys us mm -hmm. as a society is trolls and orcs and dragons uh okay. we, we we lose to an alien invasion of tolkien proportions nice <laughs> so um okay so obviously trolls and orcs there's a lot of tolkien and dungeons and dragons influence especially like i've noticed the uh the way the covers look they kind of look like those old um like uh dm manuals from the yeah. you know from the 80s and stuff and like the black and white illustrations at the end um can you talk a bit about like the influence you know dungeons and dragons and maybe other like white wolf rpgs or maybe rifts has had on it yeah yeah um i mean you know my i remember being 12 years old sitting in chris drake's basement uh with watching you know, we were watching the Road Warrior over and over again. Nice. <laughs> nice. And one to watch, though. <laughs> and, and and you know, re we were we were doing that, reading books and looking through that red box. You know, uh, Dungeons and Dragons RPG. You know, um, yeah. You know, we 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 were we were. You know, you talked about riffs. You know, riffs. I I never played riffs, but I was obsessed with riffs. It just like. Oh. It was Same. cool yeah. looking. Yeah, you know, um, yeah. you know, uh, I I am a Midwestern boy, and my mom is very <laughs> Southern Baptist, so of course she thought Dungeons and Dragons was the devil. Mm -hmm. um, of course, yeah, you know, you know, but uh, but you know, um, I wasn't really allowed to play it, but uh, I did, and I loved it. And, <laughs> you found a way. <laughs> yeah, you know, and those things. You know, um, if if more if as much as even playing, it was just the art and the stories. Yeah. Uh, the one that I kind of somehow I don't understand how she, you know, kind of let this slide. But I could read, um, I could read any of the books I wanted, and so I, you know, I always had the um, the endless quest, Dungeons and Dragons. You know, kind of choose your own adventure books. Um, okay. And I love those. And then um, I started reading the um, the Dragonlance novels. Okay, yeah. And was obsessed with those. And so I would get those, and I would get the art of books. Yeah. You know, so I was looking, I was nice. looking at Larry Amore's yeah. drawings, and you know. Uh, Keith, Keith Parkinson and you know a, a lot of you know these these amazing illustrators during that time you know Larry Elmore was always my favorite uh, he did the artwork on that that uh, red box that that we ate for our um, secret variant and then the mm -hmm. hardcover um, mm -hmm. but gotcha. you know you know that, that was my that was my absolutely not subtle nod back to my uh, <laughs> my childhood of, of staring at that box that dragon 
you know, yeah. in that horde surrounded by all the gold and, yep. and uh, that lone fighter, you know, going up against it. And it was, yeah. that was amazing. Yeah. Cool. The art, art in Arcania, I think it was or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. This one was tough. I like that. I like uh, Frank Frazetta too. Shit like that too. Was oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, Frazetta, Frazetta was the same way. Frazetta... Those, those at the same time, I was, you know, finding uh, Conan, you know, and those, oh, yeah. those, yeah. those, pulp, those covers, you know, man, they, they, oh, God. yeah, I had, I had a, um, this uh, lady, her name was, uh, was uh, Dora and she, um, she lived near, near us. And uh, I was a teenager, probably f- I was too young to be working, but I was working, I was Flipping burgers at the local Dairy Queen, and I was probably fourteen years old, and uh, and she, her name was not Dora, it was Cora. Man, I messed that one up. <laughs> yes, one of those, one of those Cora names. But uh, no, yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry, yeah. Sorry, yes, so Cora. I had a senior moment there, uh, but um, <laughs> yeah. So so, Cora, she um, she. Uh, had these Frazetta art books and show them to me and let nice. me borrow those. Draw oh, out of those no. constantly. I would, yes. yeah, I, yeah. But, but I, yes. I love them. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, those things, affect, you know, those things uh, affected me. Gotcha. Yeah. Cool. So I think we've covered comic books pretty well. Uh, the other thing I know you like to talk about on Twitter, Jeremy, is uh, bourbon. Yes. So what is your bourbon of choice? So, what is your bourbon of choice? Even um, though I know you're not drinking bourbon right now, but <laughs> yeah, um, I there is I, I kind of have different bourbons for different things. Um, okay, my yeah, so my, like for cocktails and for neat, you know? Yeah, yeah which is just, just for cocktails, I, I typically go with Basil Hayden. I think okay. it's a real a really good standard. Just, just a good bourbon. Yeah. Um, I do also do like just for well drinks. I, I, mm. I just, I just made a, a ton of uh, of hot bourbon apple cider uh, for a our mm. local market, and mm. I use four four roses for it. It's just Ooh. four roses. is Just simple. Yeah. You know, it's it's a good well bourbon. Um, yeah. My my favorite, just just neat that I've been drinking a lot of. Uh, I love Mictors. Okay. Just mm-hmm. like, the, like the small batch Mictors is really good. And then there's a Kansas City bourbon that I really like. Um, Tomstown is, is the distillery. And they make a, it's called Pendergast Royale. Okay. Um, and it it's it's really fan. It is, I I recently uh, was, was, trying to really f- think about like what i just like to drink neat mm-hmm. and and i think that that just kind of wins it's you know it's 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 about 50 a bottle it's not you know it's not super super high end but it's yeah you know it, it's it's one that you don't want to make old fashions out of or anything like right. that yeah 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 sure. yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah although uh, if you do make an old fashioned it's delicious Ooh, I bet. <laughs> yeah 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 uh, so, so, okay. Speaking of old fashioned, I know we've talked online before about using like using uh, lemons in an old fashioned instead of orange. Um, right. Do you have any other kind of like uh, I don't know, house recipes or like twists, no pun intended, mm-hmm. that you put on uh, on cocktails? So, so you really you're just you're like just go into this, and then I go mm-hmm. deep nerd. I need to go super deep nerd here. Okay, oh, dude, you go Let's totally go, go nerd on cocktails. I'm yeah. down. Okay. Yeah. Let's do it. Right, so, so can I can I just I'm gonna give our listeners my my old fashioned recipe. Okay. Oh yeah. Goes. Okay. All right. So uh, you want about oh. I I just kind of coat the bottom of the glass with it a little bit, but probably about an eighth teaspoon. You don't want it to get too sweet of uh make your own just like demerara simple syrup i use simple okay. syrup over just 
any kind of just putting the sugar in the bottom because I want that flavor to mix into the drink really well. Otherwise, you get a lot of sweet at the bottom. So just make a simple syrup, which is simple syrup is is basically just half and half uh, water to sugar and use the Demerara kind of raw sugar. Um, like I said, just a little bit at the bottom. I do, mm-hmm. I do um, five dashes of Regan's orange bitters. Okay. I do four drops of uh, Jack Rudy bitters. It's an herbal bitter. Okay. I do two Luxardo cherries and just a tiny bit of the juice. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't muddle. I don't. I don't smash the shit out of it, man. I just. I just okay. kind of like may, maybe squeeze the cherry a little bit to kind of get a little bit of the juice out. But like, no, nah, yeah. I, I just. I just let it be. Kind of okay. stir stir that together. I do uh, a couple fingers of the the bourbon of choice. Mm-hmm. I, do, I do an orange peel. Nice block of ice in there. But then the thing that I do that I'm really obsessed with is I actually have a I, I smoke it. Mm, okay. I, I take a little bit of cherry, um, like wood shavings. Mm-hmm. I've, I've got I've got a little smoker gun that I use, you know, like you okay. see in restaurants. Yeah. And I and I shoot a little bit of smoke into. It's called a cloche. It's a glass. It's literally a glass dome that okay. you put that you put over your drink and then you shoot a little bit of smoke in there and that cherry smoke makes it's a smoked old fashioned and it's it's uh it's what I do man dude man that sounds good yeah yeah I uh alright okay (laughs) I uh I may may do another tutorial on it pretty soon I I do it from time I'll, I'll I'll put one up Online. Okay. Oh, highly. Yes. Cool. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, man. Please. So, <clears throat> so you're a you're a cocktail nerd too, in addition to a comic nerd. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm probably Very more cool. of a, a cocktail nerd nowadays. Even I'm always okay. kind of fascinated with with stuff. Man, that is that is exactly uh, what this channel was uh, was intended to be. <laughs> nerd nerds and and alcohol. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Hey, hey, sign me up. Yeah, I see the picture of your. I'm sorry, going back to the. Uh, I guess where you're writing that and whatnot. I see the photo of it now. Go ahead. <laughs> it's a. Uh, that it's, is it's awesome. Pizza. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, I, right. my bad. I was I was keeping it a little bit. <laughs> no, no, yeah, no, not sorry. at all. Good. All right. Uh, well, since we're running low on time, um, do you have any new projects or events or appearances, whatever you want to promote, Jeremy? Yeah. Um, I'm pretty much done for the season as far as conventions go. Uh, you know, things will start back up um, again uh, late winter, early spring. You okay. know, I know I'm going to be no at Rose City Comic Con in uh, Seattle. I'm going to be okay. definitely at Planet Comic Con in Kansas City. But I'm working out, you know, the rest of my uh, con plans for 2019. Isn't that crazy? 2019. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's pretty insane, yeah. dude. Yeah. 2019 for me is going to be a lot of... Um, I'm going to be still working on the realm. Uh, that okay. We're going to keep going on that for the foreseeable future. Uh, we're loving working on the book. Um, actually, um, the end of November, which is going to be... I don't know when this is coming out, so please forgive me. Uh, <laughs> but I think it's November 28th. Okay. Uh, the second trade paperback of of The Realm comes out. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, that'll be in stores right around then. So depending on when this comes out, you know, it'll be soon. Um, yeah. And then, um, you know, then it kicks back up, I believe, in February. Uh we okay. will the, the new issue you know we, we take those little breaks in there that actually yeah. ensures that we don't go completely insane um <laughs> yeah it, it's kind of nice important. Yeah. yeah we need that um a little downtime in there but um then we're going to yeah just just hit you know, get right back on it and uh i'm really loving this new arc that we're working on it's got some exciting exciting stuff um 
we are, like I said, we're finishing up the beauty. Um, that'll be, we'll, we'll finish it up in 2019. I think literally the last issue of it probably comes out at the end of the year in 2019. Okay. Uh, nice. and then, and then, um, and this gets kind of crazy, but, uh, <laughs> and I can't get too far into it aside from saying that one of them is that horror thing. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, I've got, I've got four new projects that I'm writing, uh, what? in 2000. Man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Damn. I, how you feel about I, that? I tired, tired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet, I bet. Um, no, you know what? Honestly, Every year coming back from uh, New York Comic Con, um, I I work on a a what the next year holds. You know, uh, mm-hmm. okay. You know, you know what what the what the goals are for the for, and in 2018, my my goals were really to get the realm up and running. You know, okay. m- yeah. make it work, and and yeah. then just just buckle down and, and keep the keep the beauty going i was gonna have two ongoing books you know at the same time and that was that's a pretty big goal yeah right. but it really prevented me doing that prevented me from from really drawing anything new or sorry not to not drawing sorry, writing anything new oh, okay. it really, it, yeah it, it really prevented me from writing anything new uh you know being that involved in two ongoing books, drawing one of them and, and co, you know, co-creating the realm and mm-hmm. then co-writing on the beauty and doing the covers for that. It's, just, it's a lot of work. And, um, so the, I really wanted in, in the new year in 2019 and into 20 even to make some new stuff. You know, I was going to be finishing the beauty and I was like, Hey, I'm going to do these four new books. So that's the plan. <laughs> nice. Done. Nice. Yep. All right, man. Well, uh, where can people follow you or, or your work? Social media um, or websites? Yeah. Um, you can follow me on uh, Twitter and Instagram under Jerhan, J E R H A U N. Okay. Uh, Twitter, I just mainly talk about stuff that I like. I try to keep it positive. That's my goal. Um, cool. And on Instagram, I take pictures of shit I like. So it's a lot of pictures <laughs> of my, my drinks that I'm having and um, my art and some Lego stuff and, you know, just life. Um, nice. Uh, and then you can follow me on Facebook just under my name, Jeremy Hahn. Uh, and it's, you know, it's pretty similar stuff. But, you know, it's, it's just, you know. Right. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right, man. Well, thank you so much for being on the show, man. It's been a lot of fun. Really appreciate yeah. you coming on. Definitely. Uh, definitely. Welcome back, Rook's Thanks. helmet. Not gonna lie. <laughs> Rook's helmet is bad ass. Sorry. Yeah. Thank, thanks, <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you again, and thank you to the listeners for listening. If you like the show, please like and subscribe, uh, and you'll be notified when we upload another awesome interview with someone amazing. Thanks again. Good night, everyone. I forgot to say that. There we go.